Good afternoon. My name is Victoria Lancy, and I'm the Rural Education Manager with the Michigan Center for Rural Health, and I will be facilitating this program. I would like to welcome everybody to today's Oral Health Grand Round, which is Michigan's Oral Health Journey, um, the new roadmap to 2020 Oral Health Plan by Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, um, Rural Health Program, and Michigan Center for Rural Health. Just a few housekeeping. If you're logged into the webinar portion and have computer speakers, you can listen to the audio through them. If you're listening to the program via the audio number, handouts are located on our website all along. Handouts on our website are at, hold on a second. Those are located on our website at www.mcrh.msu.edu. Click on the education link on your left, scroll down, click on Oral Health Grand Round, find today's date, and there you will see the attendance the presentation and the evaluation link. Attendance forms need to be emailed, faxed, or mailed into the Michigan Center for Rural Health Office. The evaluation must be completed online. Please complete the forms within two weeks or by June 17th. If you would like to ask a question during the program, please type it into the chat box so you don't forget it, and the presenter or I will address it during the, Q the, during the Q and A. And also, too, at the end of the program, I will be unmuting all the lines, so then you can also, too, ask your question that way as well. Our speakers today indicate no conflict of interest, and the planning committee did not have any conflicts. There is no commercial support for this program. I am pleased to introduce um, Susan Demings, who uh, helps me help plan these programs, and then our speakers, Chris Farrell and Carlene Coletta. Go ahead, Susan. Hi. Thanks, Victoria, and thanks for those of you joining today. We we were, we do hear some background noise, so if you could mute your own phones, that'd be great too. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Carlene Petala um, for, as our first speaker. Carlene serves as the Executive Director of the Michigan Oral Health Coalition. In this role, she manages all coalition activities related to advocacy, continuing education, member engagement, and oral health improvement initiatives. Carlene holds a Master's of Health Services Administration degree from Central Michigan University, a Bachelor of Science from Ferris State University, and has earned the credential of Certified Association Executive. Carlene will be our first speaker. And then after Carlene, Christine Farrell will um, be the next speaker, and she's the Oral Health Director for the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. She's been employed by the um, Michigan Department of Health and Human Services since 1988 and has been the oral health director since June of 2010. Chris received both her bachelor's degree in dental hygiene and a master's degree in public administration from the University of Michigan. Um, as oral health director, she's responsible for overseeing and promoting the state of Michigan's oral health program. Her duties include ensuring the program effectively educates the public about oral health issues, as well as the implementation of preventive activities to improve the oral health of Michigan residents throughout their lifetime. Chris has a wealth of oral health knowledge at both the state and federal levels and a great deal of experience advising MDHHS's public health staff and public health partners on a vast array of program financial and administrative issues related to oral health. Chris is also an adjunct professor with the University of Michigan Dental Hygiene Program. She's an instructor with the e-learning dental hygiene bachelor degree completion program and also the Ma uh, master of dental hygiene program. So let's first welcome Carlene Kella. Go ahead, Carlene. All right, well, thank you, Susan, and thank you so much for the invitation here today to talk about the new state oral health plan. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Lansing, so I hope um, you look forward to our presentation as well as just the rest of your afternoon. Um, it's an exciting time here in Lansing and across the state as we introduce the new state oral health plan. This plan actually took about nearly a year's time to develop as we went through stakeholders um, engagement and did um, several rounds of um, brainstorming and facilitating through this process. And on May 18th, we officially released the new state plan out to the media as well as all of our coalition stakeholders. 
and it has received a great deal of response. So I'm very encouraged as we look at, and Chris will be defining out um, our goals for the state plan, but just the amount of response and the feedback that we've gotten, not only from legislators, but also um, news media across the state and across the country, um, really taking a look at the importance of oral health initiatives. So as we look forward um, to talking through the new state oral health plan, I always like to provide an environmental scan just to kind of um, just give us all a sense of where the oral health, um, not only the workforces, but also the access points are as well. So let's go through that right now. Um, a little bit about our Michigan Oral Health Coalition. Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit, and we, our mission statement, of course, is to focus on prevention, data, access, and the link between oral health and overall health. Our main focus areas are advocacy and education. And as you can see, our members, as a statewide oral health coalition, we do look for a diverse membership. So you, that's why um, we include primary care clinicians, oral health clinicians, as well as the insurers, educators, um, advocacy and provider organizations, and just um, anyone that really has um, an interest in the improvement of oral health in our state and for the families in, um, across the state as well. So as we look at our state facts, um, this is pretty telling. I always um, you know, like to put it out there, we're the Wolverine state, but of course those um, in the Lansing area were very much a Spartan state. <laughs> Go green! <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Um, as you can see, our 9.8 million Michiganders, um, we have about one in five that are enrolled in traditional Medicaid. Um, as you can see, a great number of our counties, which many of you are represented on today's um, webinar, um, are in dental shortage areas that are defined by HRSA. Um, as you can see, the number of providers that we have in our state, we have a little more than 7,500 general dentists, um, 10,000 plus hygienists, as well as just about 1,000 dental specialists, as you can see there. Um, and then I want to also draw your attention that the Medicaid dental budget is truly a small sliver of the state budget. So really with the um, programming and support of our coalition members as well as the advocacy community, we really have to work together um, to really have a loud voice here in the capital city as we talk about oral health improvements as well as programming and um, insurance programs that um, benefit our population. Um, and then our state also benefits from having a state dental director, and you'll hear from Christine Farrell in just a few moments, but um, a great number of the states across the country do not have um, a dental director or, a oral, or an oral health program, so we do have that distinct um, recognition of oral health within our state. We also, of course, have two dental schools, which are, include the University of Detroit Mercy, and the University of Michigan, along with about 10 hygiene programs um, within the state as well. And then just a historical fact, the coalition celebrated our 10-year anniversary, so we're looking at our 13th anniversary um, in, um, this year as the collective voice of oral health. So as we take a quick look of the dental delivery system, I don't know for those around the table how familiar you are, uh, but just taking a look at our dental delivery system as it relates to low-income families, and we'll take a look right now at adults. Uh, Michigan actually just provides, the state of Michigan provides as part of the adult dental program, Medicaid adult dental program, a limited adult dental benefit. So we don't do perio, and there's a few other services that really keep us down to that limited adult dental benefit structure. Um, at this present time, we are a fee-for-service um, state for traditional Medicaid. Um, as many of you know, we do have the Healthy Michigan Plan, which um, we've lovingly called that, um, but it is the Medicaid expansion for those um, low-income, for primarily low-income adults that um, do not meet the Medicaid threshold for that program. And that program is um, operated through the health plan, um, the Medicaid health plan, but then contract with a dental insurance company to deliver those benefits. Um, also, our state includes um, a program that's a partnership between the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services and the Dental Association, 
um, to provide the donated dental services. And this is really for those high-risk individuals, um, older adults that um, are in need of care. And this is, as it's called, a donated program where dentists volunteer their time and services and provide, um, I would say, a final safety net for those that are in great need that are um, among our older population in the state. Um, and at this point, with all the programs covered, that covers about 1.2 million Michigan adults. As we look at children, um, we're really looking at, um, if you look to the image to my, to my right, um, Medicaid provides services through the Healthy Kids Dental Program. I hope many of you are aware of that program. It's a partnership between the state of Michigan and Delta Dental. And at this point, um, the program, which started as a pilot project in about 2000, it's um, gone county by county as the legislature has supported the program. And as you can see, all of the counties in blue are current Healthy Kids Dental counties. And then also, those that are identified in green, those are, um, are Healthy Kids Dental counties, but at this point in time, they're for children that are under the age of 13. So there is a little difference for those folks or those children in Kent, Oakland, and Wayne counties. And at this moment, um, the state legislature is debating the fiscal year 16-17 budget, which includes monies for the final expansion for Healthy Kids Dental. And the governor has been supportive, the House of Representatives has been supportive, and the Senate has been supportive. So we do remain hopeful, even in these tough economic times, that that final expansion will take effect um, October 1. So then all children um, that are on Medicaid within Michigan um, receive the same benefits and are covered under the same program. And that program is such a win for our children, um, our low-income children in the state, just as um, the program increases the number of providers that children are able to um, access and, of course, then receive care. Um, and then also just wanting to talk through uh, the numbers, just to give you a good um, understanding, we have about 1 million Michigan children under the age of 21 that are within the Medicaid and um, under the CHIP program. And um, CHIP is also known by the My Child, so low-income uh, children, um, but they don't meet the Medicaid threshold. Also, Michigan does benefit from the fact of having the Department of Health and Services that they operate the SEAL Michigan grant program in several communities across the state. And the department works with um, nonprofit organizations to uh, begin and help facilitate um, school-based sealant programs. And you can learn more about that on the state's website as well. Uh, we also, as a state, benefit from the Medicaid, um, Medicaid um, being able to pay medical providers to provide fluoride varnish for younger children. And that's also on um, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services website under the oral health program as well. And then another thing, Michigan um, does benefit from the collaborative practice program, um, which include Public Act 161. And this is where hygienists can work outside of the traditional office setting, so they can go into schools, they can go into nursing homes to provide preventive services but then they are also connected by contract and by um, a memorandum of agreement that they have a referral dentist. As we look at the oral health environment in Michigan, I also wanted to draw your attention to um, community water fluoridation. Um, for those dental professionals and medical professionals on to the phone today, um, you, know, you, you have strong support and understanding of the benefits of fluoridated water. And Michigan does do a pretty good job. We're at about 90%, 90.2% of um, water systems in our state are fluoridated. Also wanted to take you through the national initiatives. And I do put arrows here because I feel like these are all pushing on Michigan. Um, CMS at this point has an oral health strategy that's looking to improve sealant rates as well the number of children with sealants as well as um, children getting into care. So they're taking a watchful eye 
on the Medicaid program. Um, also, there's the Oral Health 2020 um, initiative that's going on that's taking a look at um, systems change. So it's kind of looking at how we can partner with traditional, non-traditional stakeholders to move, um, move forward related to oral health. And then also the Pew Charitable Trust, um, they're looking at workforce, and I think workforce is just something as we look at um, what registered dental assistants can be doing, what registered dental hygienists can be doing, and just really looking how we can increase productivity around um, the currently, le currently licensed workforce. All right, and with all that, we looked at um, the Michigan Oral Health Coalition. We have defined several policy priorities, and this was completed during a um, one-day planning session with um, about 60 individuals, which represented, I mentioned, the diverse um, membership within the Michigan Oral Health Coalition. And we really look at, you know, we want to complete the expansion of Healthy Kids Dental, we work to increase payment on preventative oral health care for high-risk populations. Um, we're going to be advocating for an oral health mandate prior to school entry. We want to take a look at it, how to increase access with currently licensed workforce. Um, also looking at how to increase the general fund appropriations for the state oral health program. Um, because at this, this time, the program is predominantly funded through grants. And then also looking to preserve existing community water fluoridation here in Michigan. And as many of you know, um, different years, um, I think back in 2014, we had about five or six challenges happening across the state related to fluoridation. And the coalition in partnership with the Department of Health and Human Services was able to um, intervene and provide not only talking points, but also testified at city council and um, other meetings on that topic. So um, it's always something that we have a watchful eye on as it relates to community water fluoridation. And then also my last slide I wanted just to um, share with you as part of our Oral Health 2020 um, initiative of the Michigan Oral Health Coalition. We actually fund five local coalitions. And as you can see here, um, we have um, local coalitions in Holland, Oakland County, which is a part of J or which has JVS Tri-County Dental Program, Kent County Oral Health Coalition, Macomb County Health Department, and the Saginaw Health Plan. So if you're from any of those areas, I encourage you to reach out to those local coalitions because I know they would appreciate having your voice at the table. All right, at this time we're gonna transition. I feel like we've kind of um, seen where we are currently and we will jump over to the release of the 2020 State Oral Health Plan with Christine Farrell. You can do that slideshow on the bottom. Yeah, right here. Oh, right here. All right, welcome, Chris. Good afternoon, everybody, and hopefully you are enjoying your lunch. And we are um, in that. We are going to celebrate um, the release of the. 2020 Michigan Oral Health Plan, and as you can see, Celebrate has the word eight in it. So as, like I said, this is over your lunch hour, so hopefully you <laughs> had a chance to um, eat to eight. To eight. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we call this a, a, a 2020 roadmap because we have had um, quite an interesting journey, and Arlene has kind of mentioned that this journey started over a year ago, and we have had uh, multiple, you know, stakeholders that were involved in this journey. Um, our journey isn't necessarily a flat, straight road, but it's taken a lot of curves and ups and downs. And um, as we, as, but we are going to be continuing it. As we mentioned, we started about a year ago with uh, developing this oral health plan. And if you haven't seen the plan, you can find it on the oral health um, website, the MDHHS um, website you know, for the oral health page, or you can also find it on the Michigan Oral Health Coalition's webpage. Both of us have sent out information on that. But what we um, how we started, we started with a survey to stakeholders. Um, we 
people who we had multiple partners with on different projects um, through the Dental Association, the Hygienist Association, um, coalition members, trying to come up with what they thought of the previous um, they plan and then what some of the goals were, um, some of the things that they thought we should be putting into the new plan. So we reviewed a lot of documents. One of them was called the uh, MDHHS Director Dental Report from the former director, um, James Haveman, had pulled together a group of folks looking at oral health in 2013-14 um, area to look at um, oral health. We also looked at Delta Dental's Brighter Futures um, report. You've already heard about the policy priorities from the Michigan Oral Health Coalition. We looked at those. And we also looked at our old goals. So we wanted to make sure that we were, um, we were trying to make sure that we were up to date and being um, relevant. This is our third oral health plan. I'm not sure how many of you are aware that um, we, we had our first one was and from 2006 to 2010, and then our second one was from 2010 to 2015. So um, usually it's about a five-year plan, and we are trying to come up with a, a framework of what we're going to be looking at in terms of where, where, does, where is oral health and where are we going. I do want to put a plug in for um, the old plan that we have, uh, the, the young girl on the right hand, well, my right hand uh, screen. We have also um, developed some success stories because that, that old plan had 10 goals and there were some success stories and that is also posted on the website and it provides some stories that regarding all our partners and how they've had increased oral health and just how things have changed over, over, the, over the years and what the landscape looks like. So again, um, this is the new vision that we came up with. Uh, we had a planning meeting on August 27th of 2015 and through a lot of discussion, voting, and consensus building, the following vision was um, adopted to guide us forward and it's like all Michiganders will have the knowledge, support, and care they need to achieve optimal oral health. And then we further went on and re, um, had small groups where we, re, where we refined goals, created smart objectives, and we identified activities. And a lot of those goals and activities were based on a lot of participant input from pre-work. And I, and I do want to emphasize that there was a lot of people who had their fingers and input into this project. It was not just state employees or a coalition member. It, we had a lot of different stakeholders. Um, there were over 65, I, I think, people who were invited um, to have input into this um, plan. And as you get, and if you get the plan and look through it, it's about a 37-page document. A lot of it does have. Um, the environmental scan information about what, you know, what is going on in Michigan. But you're, as you go through it, you're going to be noticing icons um, as, we go th as you go through it and look at goals and activities. Um, and those icons represent community or um, government or consumers or the media. Those are ideas that we have created that for people to be working on and looking at helping promote and doing activities for the plan. These were the three goals that we came up with that um, were um, adopted. The goal one is enhance professional integration between providers across the lifespan. The second goal is increase knowledge and awareness of the importance of oral health to overall health. And the third goal was increase access to oral health care among underserved and or hard to reach populations. These goals, um, the old plan had 10 goals, so we synthesized down to three really broad based goals. Again, here's goal number one, enhance professional integration between providers across the lifespan. What we did is in these small groups created objectives um, some, there, these were the top five objectives. Um, there are definitely many more different objectives that can be uh, related, but these were the ones that were adopted by this group. 
Um, some of these were related to, as I mentioned, the previous um, dental director report or maybe the Delta Dental Brighter Futures or some of the policy priorities. So these are some objectives that we thought that would enhance professional integration between providers across the lifespan. Within that um, booklet also are some activities. But this is a really important part is how can you help? And these were just some ideas that we came up with in terms of professional integration. Is that make, maybe making sure in, the, in dental offices that you educate patients on oral health risk with chronic diseases. The same way medical practices should be talking to patients about oral health risk with their chronic disease. Um, and you can see here we have tobacco and diabetes and making sure blood pressure screens are also done. So how and asthma, how all those relate to oral health. You know, be aware of the resources available. Making sure that your medical histories um, on for either your EHR on the medical side or your electronic dental record also includes um, information on blood pressure, oral cancer screening. And join coalitions. There are a number of, you know, different types of coalitions, not just the oral health one. There's tobacco and there's a diabetes coalition. coalition. And making sure you're referring appropriately to either dental offices from, you know, um, if you're a medical provider to uh, referring the, your patient to making sure they're getting um, appropriate dental care or vice versa um, if you're seeing something in the dental office that you should be referred to a medical provider. Again, goal number two, increase knowledge and awareness and import of the importance of oral health to overall health. Again, here's some objectives. Um, and this is where we're um, really looking at um, increasing awareness and knowledge and a lot of that is education. And again, looking at not just at the state, site, at the state level, but looking at county advocacy networks and creating oral health champions within, um, you know, communities. And I think we'll hear more about that over the next year about how do we how do we look at oral health champions um, throughout Michigan. So again, um, I've come up with uh, how can you help for each one of these goals to kind of stimulate some of ideas on where you can and that um, you can promote dental sealant uh, either through um, school-based programs or even in your own, you know, if you're in a private dental office, make sure that you are promoting dental sealants to parents, especially if the kids are at high risk, because that is one of the evidence-based practices to help prevent decay. You can provide oral health education to schools, head starts, nursing homes, um, daycare centers, um, any, you know, really, um, maybe even think about businesses and where, where are they at if they have community fairs um, regarding oral health. So, make, you know, basically looking to see in your community what programs are, your, are available and where you could fit in and provide some oral health information. Our goal three is increase access to oral health care among underserved and or hard to reach populations. Again, more objectives, and again, there are some activities. And you can see that we're looking across the lifespan. We're looking at making sure that we increase the proportion of pregnant women who receive oral health care during their pregnancy, uh, the proportion of infants, children, and young adults who receive dental services. And then we're looking at um, folks with disabilities. And then we'll be looking at older adults um, in terms of their delays or barriers to receiving oral health care by 10%. And that oral health for older adults will be become more of an issue as we move forward as every day there are thousands of people turning 65 in this country and how are we going to address um, oral health and the aging. So again, how can you help? We have, um, you can talk with your pregnant mothers um, regarding anticipatory guidance, how to make sure that they take care of themselves and then their unborn child and then their infant. I noticed on here is that our guide to Michigan perinatal oral health. There are perinatal oral health guidelines that were um, 
published last year through the department, and there's information that you can find on the website regarding that. Um, also, again, your infant and making sure that babies and infants by age one see a dental visit. Um, you can get, get involved with Head Start. That's the early childhood, you know, from there's early Head Start and Head Start programs where they need um, an exam by a dentist and they need to have their dental care completed. Special Care Dentistry Association is the association for people um, that especially provide care for people who are disabled or hospital dentistry. And that's a whole area of need that we need to think about and provide care to those individuals um, because a lot of them have compromised oral health, um, maybe related to their chronic condition, the medications they're on. So we need to start looking at increasing the awareness and helping the special needs folks get care and how do we get that care. And the Michigan Donated Dental Services was already kind of mentioned by Carlene, and the, dental, the Michigan Dental Association is definitely promoting um, get in recruiting dentists um, into Michigan Donated Dental Services. It is for the elderly and disabled who are not insured and um, need, need a, you know, oral health care. There is an application and an eligibility and financial criteria that you have to meet. But we are looking to expand um, the numbers seen and then the numbers dentists recruited. So how are we going to know that we are making um, a difference in our oral health plan? We are going to monitor and evaluate this um, plan on an on a annual basis. And what we've done in the past is we usually solicit feedback on the activities that people and partners, organizations, agencies have done, and the activities that they've implemented during the past year. And again, we usually present an, a progress report to the membership at the um, fall member meeting and then usually at the conference in the spring. We try to give a, um, an update on to where where are we at, where is our targets, and what, what, are we, what are we doing. And if you are a member, if you're, even if you're not a member, you can um, like the coalition on their Facebook page or follow them on Twitter um, and learn and see what um, the Oral Health Coalition is up to and, what see, um, and what's going on in terms of not just here in the state, but a lot of times they do but may highlight uh, things that are going on nationally. So you can follow them on Facebook and other, um, you know, the social media fronts to see what's going on. Again, the Oral Health Coalition has been a very good partner um, for really any consumer agency, um, oral health professional, um, anybody who's interested in oral health, they've been the collective voice for oral health for more than 10 years. Um, they have provided a number of different products, and I have a copy. Um, this is what this screen shows. Some of their grantee profiles where they are um, have local coalitions. They've also done a county profile. The last one was in 2013 was a Michigan County profile, kind of an environmental scan for each county of what's been happening there. So um, as Carlene also mentioned, she's also um, our partner in terms of looking at policy and um, advocacy and determining and watching what's happening at the, at the legislative level, especially during this budget process. So how can you help again? You can join a, the Oral Health Coalition. You can join as a, mem as a single member, or your agency can join. There are different levels of membership. Um, you can support our pol the policy priorities. And these were some of the issues that you can advocate and collaborate on. As you, as you can see, there's a lot of eight words that I, I like words with eight, because <laughs> I like to eat. No. <laughs> um, but anyway, you, there's fluoridation issues. And again, um, fluoridation issues um, are not 
they are going on and they continue to go on. Our current one that we are working on this year is with the Union City down, which is down more in the southwest corner of the Michigan. We're looking at school-based dental sealant programs and trying to expand our SEAL Michigan program and looking at SEAL of approval programs and how you can um, work with the state through um, some collaborative agreements. So again, the Healthy Kids Dental Expansion, where we're looking at a healthy Michigan plan. And then Carlene also mentioned the proposed oral health screening for school entry. So you can um, think about joining and how you can help with the coalition. These are my parting thoughts, and these are, it's a quote from Henry Ford, and as um, I mentioned, we are, you know, we, the title is kind of a roadmap of the 2020 plan, and we are on a, on a journey, and so I thought this was kind of fitting, because it fit right in with um, the fact that we have, we're the Motor, Motor City State, and so we are, you know, very proud of our journey. As I mentioned, the plan is about 35 or 30, about 35 to 37 pages long. There's um, a lot of information in here on the environmental scan about what's going on in oral health in Michigan, the goals. Um, then, as I mentioned, the icons that will help you see and kind of hopefully stimulate your interest about what kind of activities that you're going to get um, involved in, the monitoring and the evaluation of it, and then there are some target. Um, there are some targets that we have listed in the book about hopefully in terms of goals that we can reach. Some of those targets are related to Healthy People 2020, which is a, um, a national program that every state is looking at. So hopefully you hopefully you can download it. Um, if you need a copy or so, um, the copies are available through the Michigan Oral Health Coalition office and we can give you that um, website address or Carlene um, inform contact information for you to get um, if you wanted a hard copy. But for the most part, um, you can download the program from the website. So as I mentioned, we are pretty proud of our journey. Um, we think we have made some inroads, but we have a long way to go. And I have some final words to stimulate more ideas, and again, these all these words are um, they're active words, and they all end in eight. And so, I think they were, as I get, they were appropriate for the lunch hour. So, um, as you look through the plan, I want you to educate, integrate, coordinate, collaborate, disseminate, promulgate, officiate elaborate, anticipate, initiate, advocate, communicate, and delegate. There's a lot more that you can think about and find a list on Google, but um, let's operate in a way to improve oral health and continue our journey as we move forward. Thank you. Um, this is my contact information, Carlene's um, contact information was on her slide, I think. Yeah. It's um, Carlene Ketela. It's K-K-E-T-O-L-A at M-O-H-C dot org. If you want to have a heart, you know, send her an email if you want like a hard copy of this program, of, of the plan. I believe at this point, we, we can open the lines for questions if you have questions about the oral health plan and the activities that we have proposed. Okay, Victoria, do you wanna, do you wanna organize the questions? Yep, I'll now um, unmute the lines or you can either type your question into me directly or you can type it into the presenters. Um, also, I will be unmuting the lines, and so just be mindful that we can hear any conversations that you are having, so um, if we can just keep the chatter to a minimum. Thank you. So if we have any questions, we can go ahead and ask them, because I have un all the lines unmuted, or you can type your question in. 
Okay, this is Susan. I can start the question. Go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask both of these gals, who do you see using this plan? I mean, who do you envision using this? Go ahead, Carleen. All right, well, this is Carleen. I think for my response, as I um, kept worked on the plan development, and now I think every, every time I've seen this presentation or been a part of it, I feel like I'm learning, learning and being, being reminded of um, my role. I think my role um, is to share it with as many people. Also, I'm looking at how the local coalition can then build the, new, the state oral health plan into the work that they do. I find that the program is written so it does engage people that represent the full spectrum of not only the dental provider community, but also the medical provider, social services, and a number of other um, advocates and organizations. So I think my role is to just encourage them to consider how they're an, a, an oral health advocate, even though they may not be a DDS or an RDA. I think, um, in terms of who should be using this plan, I think it really, as Carlene mentioned, it's really open for all of us. And there are, um, you know, priorities for state officials and state um, employees. Um, there are ones at the local government level. And there are, and then for any agency and or, you know, any local grassroots agency that's interested. But then there's also, um, I think even for parents, um, there is definitely interest in basically making sure their children get access to care and understanding the need for the education. So I, I, it's, it's really, I think, written hopefully broad enough um, that we can that we can provide information to everybody and that everybody can use it and come up with a way to, you know, promote, you know, knowledge, education, um, provide, um, eliminate barriers to care. So it really, it really is a way for you to look at those um, three goals and figure out a way that maybe what you can do within your area to help with those goals. Unfortunately, um, one of the questions that we had asked, been asked before too, is there funding behind this plan? And there really isn't in terms of funding behind it. There is funding in terms of maybe some of the projects, such as the Seal Michigan programs or um, funding to help support the donated dental services, um, funding for increasing Healthy Kids Dental, but there's not specific funding around the state oral health plan. It's funding for all the kinds of different activities. And some of those will have to maybe be found in um, grant active, you know, grant funding to help support and move this forward too. We have a question here that popped up. It says for, uh, for dental professionals working in FQHCs for the county dental clinics or the state, have you engaged the Michigan Dental Association to make memberships more affordable in order to coordinate care at facilities and increase communication? Um, we haven't specifically addressed that issue with the Michigan Dental Association. Um, that might be something that they, they should be look, you know, that they could be looking at in terms you know, it's a barrier to care. That might be a great activity to think about to, for them to, to, to look at different levels of care, but that's not something specifically we've met or talked with them. The Michigan Dental Association and a lot of the public health dental clinics were part of the development of this process. Um, so I think they're aware of some of the barriers, but that was not a specific um, activity or topic that had, had been raised, but it's an interesting one. Are there any other questions or comments from our participants? Susan, I have one more question. How do you, how do you see the dentistry and the PA-161 program um, as 
part of this plan. Um, as Carlene mentioned also, um, one of the, in our environmental scan is that we do have collaborative practice and the PA-161, which the public dental prevention programs work in with hygienists um, providing preventive care. I do see that they fit into pretty much all of the goals um, and that they can help reduce barriers um, to care. Uh, they can, especially if there are barriers for transportation um, and providing preventive care and that, that maybe they can be the conduit be as providing that preventive care to get referrals to um, dentists in their community. That is one of the um, things that they do, uh, for PA-161 providers um, have to have the memorandum of agreement with local dentists, but they do fit in with um, advancing, um, the, you know, the addressing the oral health care issue. They, I can see where they fit in with the pro professional integration issue. Um, granted, unfortunately, uh, the way our state practice act is, the hygienist cannot work directly under a physician's um, order, but maybe in the future that will be, you know, that will be, that could be taken, you know, might be a topic that could be looked at as we look further into integration. But I do know that um, Grace Health in um, Jackson has really looked at that and has incorporated uh, hygienists into their medical, their OB clinic um, as a, in the, using their PA-161 providers. So there are, there are limitations on PA-161 providers, but maybe um, as we think about where, what kind of care delivery and the kind of the systems of care we want in the future, we can make sure we include that, those PA-161 providers in how, we, in how it delivered care. Well, and I also see a big part of this plan is, is addressing literacy. I think those great opportunities for dental professionals to reach those populations that need, you know, need an increase in the importance of oral health. So. Yeah. Yeah, health, health literacy and or um, is, is beyond just um, you know reading level. It's it's more about understanding and what what their needs. So yes, health literacy I think is coming to the forefront too, and we have to address that. Are there any other questions or comments? Okay. If we don't have any other questions or comments, or if you feel that you have one that later on, you can always put it in your evaluation and I can pass it along. Or if you need to, you can always contact me and I can pass your comments or your questions along to our presenters as well. Um, or you can con them to contact them directly as they have given you their contact information. With that, we'll go ahead and sign off if there aren't any other questions or comments. Um, thank you to Chris and Carlene for presenting. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.